I'm Robert Shaw. I am the leader of the machine assembly and installation section. And uh, today I'm going to talk about the assembly of the machine. The machine, uh, as it's called, uh, consists of about 15 major subsystems, depending on how you slice it up. Um, within those subsystems, we have about 300 very big components, um, which require extremely specialized lifting equipment uh, in order to handle them. And if we get down to the component level, well, it's, it's very difficult to say how many components we actually have. But if we say round about a million, uh, then I guess we wouldn't be too far wrong. To put what I've just said into perspective, uh, very few, if any, machines consist of quite as number of pieces as, uh, as the ETA machine does. If you, you take a look at the, the view here, um, the machine is about 30 meters in diameter and uh, a little over that in height. Um, so we're looking at very big components. The, 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 the heaviest single component we will handle is the base of the cryostat, which runs uh, along where I have my finger, and the weight of that is close on 1,200 tons. Um, if we look to the TF magnet, which are these D-shaped components, which are superconducting coils, each of which weigh about 300 tons, we're looking at tolerances or achieving tolerances during assembly of the order of a millimeter or two. This kind of machine has never really been built before. You take all of those challenges, put them together, and assembling eater is, is quite a difficult thing to do. Carry out the assembly operations, we need a, an extremely extensive toolkit of very large, heavy, strong, uh, expensive, and precise tools. So the two biggest tools are illustrated in these pictures here. This is the tool that we turn the subassembly tool, and what we do in here is to take the sector of vacuum vessel as it's delivered. We suspend it from the top and progressively we install first the thermal shield uh, around the outside of the vacuum vessel and then we rotate two TF coils into position. You can see a TF coil here. Um, the tool is 22 meters tall and uh, the tool alone weighs 700 tons which is impressive except that the combined mass of the components it's handling is about 1250 tons. So the view on the right shows the configuration in the machine pit. This component here is the the biggest and, and heaviest that we have to, single piece that we have to handle. Um, the tooling uh, in this context is this central tower and a series of beams which support uh, the TF cores and the vacuum vessel sectors and align them while we assemble them. The way we assemble the machine, or the sequence, um, is aimed at achieving uh, a very accurate alignment, particularly of the magnet systems and the in-vessel components, which have to be aligned very accurately if the machine is going to work. We start with the foundations. Uh, which is always a good place to start. We install the base of the cryostat. We install the supports for the machine, which you can see, you can see one of the 18 here. And then we have a large number of components in this area which become trapped underneath the machine once the, the TF cores are installed. And so these are brought in and laid down on temporary supports in this area. We then proceed with the sub-assembly operation um, and we bring the large sectors of machine into the pit and mount them on their supports here here join all of the TF coils together join the thermal shields together and we weld the vacuum vessel sectors together we proceed then by mounting these components that were temporarily placed uh, in this area. We fill in the area around the machine and then we complete the machine by installing the components up at the top. 
Another issue for the assembly is actually getting the components to fit together. We're talking about components which are manufactured in different facilities around the world. Rather than sitting here waiting for the components to arrive, we will send our people out to the different DAs, to the different companies who are manufacturing the components, and confirm the dimensions of the components for our purposes before they ever arrive on the site. Although ITER is indeed a unique project, um, a technological challenge that has really never been faced before, these measures that we're going to take will give us confidence that we can actually build this machine.